Hey there friends, welcome back. So I'm here again with another demonstration video. And in this demonstration video, I'm going to discuss about an issue which was faced by one of my team members very recently while he was working on a Spring Boot application. So in this video, I'm going to go through um, demo Spring Boot application. And then I'm going to reproduce that issue. And finally, I'm going to fix it. So I would like to call that issue as a validation constraints for entity relationship. So while there is uh, some sort of relationship between entities and uh, if we do not know actually how to uh, validate those mappings, this issue may arise in our code or in our application from the client end. So basically we are dealing with two entities in this particular demonstration video one is user and the one is the address and both of these has a relationship and this relationship we could call it as a composition so basically user has one address or we could call it as a this is a one-to-one -one relationship okay so if we now take a look at the source code the source code is very basic there is um, nothing to explain that much about it. As you can see, this is the executable class for a Spring Boot application. And we have two entity classes, as we have seen in the diagram. Like we have a one user entity class, which has some attributes, obviously. For example, ID, name, email, password, etc. And similarly, this address entity class has some related attributes as well like id street city country so on and so forth and we have that relationship between the user and address right in our user entity class as you can see this user has the address as well and this two relationship is annotated as one-to-one -one relationship okay and also both of these entity classes have their related um, uh, repository class and additionally user has the um, uh, service class um, and finally final not finally actually the user has the controller class as well like um, and this particular controller class has one endpoint like API users so using the post request we can create an user in our application okay and finally we have a validation handler which handles the all the exceptions and errors in our application which are related to the um, um, rest request mapping or if I simplify this I'm not going to go too deep uh, on this demonstration video regarding this validation handler but very simply uh, those classes that have this request mapping annotation and any exception or error generated by those classes are handled by this singular or single validation handler class okay and so uh, if we now at this point run this application and see the output first we are gonna create a an user first okay So if we now get to a REST client and we have a sample or demo uh, JSON request body here. So if we just execute it, okay. So right now we have one user in our database. One user has been created in, 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 in the database, okay. 
also I have forgot to mention one thing that uh, for this particular application we are using the h2 in memory database okay so we are not using any rdbms databases like mysql or uh, postgresql so probably i'm going to um, give you the link to the code repository so that you can download this source code and uh, play with this application right away okay so at this point we have no error right the application is running and working as expected and here before going any further I'm going to talk about something like the validation okay so for this um, particular entity classes like user for user we have different sorts of validations added for example the name cannot be empty and the uh, size that means the uh, length of the name uh, should be at least of uh, uh, two and if it's not properly validated or not uh, uh, the input name is not following this um, uh, policies or rules and rest uh, rules or uh, violating this uh, uh, validation then username should have at least two characters this sort of messages uh, message will be displayed on the rest client okay so same goes for the other fields as well we have this um, for the password field as well for email field as well and also similar to similar similarly on the address class as well we can see this this sort of validation has been added uh, as well on this class for example the street cannot be empty the city cannot be empty the country country cannot be empty and each of this field has a particular minimum size okay and at this point if I get back to the rest client again and try to modify the um, request a little bit so for example what happens now if I just reduce the username to a single character and try to um create an user with this so it's showing an error message right username should have at least two characters so what happens now let's say the name is okay fine but street name is not uh following that particular minimum length uh, restriction so if we go to execute that uh, request again we get this um, pretty terrifying error message on the right side that is it's showing that internal server error. that means this request is not being processed properly from the uh, server side source code okay so what happens now let's get back to the source code again or ID again And if we take a look at the error of the exceptions that have that have been generated here on the ID so if I uh, okay so here as you can see list of constraint violations there are some constraint violations happened here okay so what's sh so, uh, uh, showing here is that uh, there's some interpolated message here that is a street should have at least two characters property path street root bin class class name here and message template is something like that and with root cause that is the exception is thrown from the constraint violation uh, exception class okay so what is showing here that validation failed for classes address and the um user so basically what happens is that this grouping is not working properly for this uh validation okay so the grouping is not working properly for validation so this is what i call is validation constraint for entity relationship okay so how we can solve this problem okay if i 
uh, get back to the controller class where we are actually using a validated annotation we are expecting our request to be validated while it's executed okay but unfortunately it's only validating the request for the parent class that is the user class but unfortunately it's not validating that uh, for the address class okay so how we can solve it so in order to solve it I'm gonna um, terminate the process and then get back to the um, user entity class and here as you can see like like the like we have validated those uh, name email and password we also need to validate this address as well so mistakenly most probably he has forgotten it but we have to use a we we can use a valid annotation here so this is what will happen is that this annotation will validate the address object as well okay and as we have already uh, validated the uh, fields here so this will ensure that this request is properly validated while executed okay so if I get back to the executable class so let's run this application again Okay, now let's get back to the um, REST client and at this point let's execute the request like this. Okay, so now it's showing that street should have at least two characters. What happens if we make more changes here? Let's say name is not correct, password length is also not correct and street is not okay, maybe country is empty. So for all this particular um, invalid input, so what we get is that we get specific message for each of this uh, invalid input. Okay, so for example, for password, it's showing that it should be at least eight characters. For name, for address, and for country, we get all the uh, related validation messages on our REST client. Okay. So this is this is how we can actually deal with this sort of problems in our Spring Boot application. So thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Peace out. Bye.